so in in terms of talking about how things are discussed internally and how you guys handle uh, your workload with the various different projects you're working on, one thing that that's there in your little you know, title on your green bar is Chrome OS. And it was around mm -hmm. this time last year that there was all those wild rumors running around that you guys were going to merge Android and Chrome OS. And then, you know, we saw Google I.O. and we saw the uh, the interoper interoperability between the two platforms. Um, but let's say, you know, you're at a holiday party and someone asks you, what's the difference between Chrome OS and Android? How do you answer that to the average person? What What's the difference? Yeah. Bet between Chrome OS and Android. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I think they target very different uh, 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 users. You know, uh, Android, the, the starting point of Android, as you know, is was phones. Uh, and of course, over time, we've evolved that to include tablets and watches and TVs and cars and, and, and now IoT devices and so on. Uh, and the starting point for Chrome OS, uh, you know, was, you know, laptops. Uh, the CR48 was the first laptop that they showed years ago at a, at a Google I.O. I think it was Sundar who actually demonstrated that. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a laptop. Now, obviously, there's Chrome, uh, uh, Chrome OS devices running on sort of desktops now as well. But um, uh, I think that the starting points are very different. Uh, Chrome OS, and you were asking about updates earlier, you know, another difference with Chrome OS is that uh, they're managed, the software updates are managed by Google, right? So pretty much every six weeks, just like the Chrome browser, Chrome OS updates itself. Um, and, and there was a lot of effort put into that update mechanism by the team who built Chrome OS to make sure that that would be possible. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're, the starting points are very different. You know, Chrome OS, by the way, ex extremely successful uh, uh, in education. Uh, you know, about 50% of U.S. Uh, uh, students in, in public schools now use Chromebooks, you know, and so that's a, that's a big deal. It's the number one platform uh, uh, in education, uh, you know, more than any of the other platforms combined. And so we're very proud of that. Um, you know, in, in, I think it was in Q1 of this year, at least in the U.S., uh, Chromebooks, Chrome OS uh, is now the number two sort of desktop OS platform, right? So there's Windows, there's Chrome OS, and then there's Macs. So uh, I think we're very fortunate as a company to have two very successful platforms, each in their own way and in their own segments. Uh, and, and what you're seeing, uh, you know, all these rumors about merging these things, like for us, there's, there's no point in merging them. We, they're, they're both successful. Uh, we just want to make sure that both sides benefit from each other. So that's why we brought the apps, uh, you know, Google Play from Android over to Chrome OS. Uh, and then, for instance, the update mechanism uh, from Chrome OS uh, to Nougat, you know, so that there, there's what we call AB updates where you just reboot and you're already updated. So we're, you'll see a lot, a lot more of that happening where we're sort of cross-pollinating, but not, not sort of a, a merge. Excellent. Cool. That's that's really exciting. Um, I'm yeah. I'm a big Chrome OS fan, and and the kind of bringing the porting over whatever you want to call it of Android apps into Chrome OS. I just think it makes it so much more uh, valuable uh, for so many different use cases. I have a question about the EU because obviously right now the European Union has um, some big concerns with Android. It's continually in the news. They say that Android limits consumer choice um, because of all the kind of interconnected Google services uh, within the platform. Last month, Google uh, stated in a filing that Android has never been more competitive. Um, what, what's your take on this? Is this a, I mean, is there a possibility that similar complaints like this is going to uh, kind of penetrate the U.S. and that this is going to be a, become a much bigger uh, nut to crack for you guys? Yeah, well, I can't. I can't predict the future, so I don't know what other uh, uh, countries will do. But what I can say about the, the European Union, specifically the European Commission case, is that, you know, uh, you know we feel, and, and this is what I was explaining earlier, just the openness of Android, we feel like we've brought more competition, right? We, we were able to enable, uh, you know, 1.4 billion devices coming from a variety of different manufacturers, all competing with each other, and Apple, by the way, uh, uh, to the market while still maintaining sort of this, this uh, consistent app development environment for developers so that um, as a manufacturer, by the way, you know, the, the, the story I told you about Google Maps 10 years ago, that was bad for consumers, obviously, because now as a consumer, you're like, well, okay, I can buy this phone, but I'm not sure if Google Maps is going to work on this. You know, that was a bad thing for consumers. Right. It was also bad for manufacturers because they were spending a lot of time and energy developing an operating system, which which costs money, 
Uh, and they weren't sure if important apps would show up on their platform because app developers had to pick which ones to, you know, so it was just bad for everyone. And here comes Android. We, we designed it that way where it could sort of solve those problems. And it wasn't because of some sort of magic. It was because we were as a developer facing that same problem that, that we decided we wanted to solve that problem. Uh, so I think a platform like Android that has fostered competition, has created opportunities you know, for manufacturers, for developers, for hopefully consumers, um, uh, you know, I think uh, it's unprecedented, certainly at this scale, something that's this open, that's open source, has never done, been done before. Um, and so I think, you know, fundamentally what we're trying to accomplish and what the European Commission is trying to accomplish is the same thing, which is more competition, a healthy ecosystem and so on. Um, we just have to work through the process uh, to make sure that uh, they fully understand our viewpoints and our, our sort of supporting uh, data. Uh, and, and by the way, if, you, if you're interested, I'm sure you've, you've looked at this, our, our, uh, uh, there's a blog post by Kent Walker. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, who's a, a Google employee who talks about sort of our response to the to the European Commission? I think you know that really resonated with me when I when I read that. Agreed. Agreed. This interview is so serious, Hiroshi. We have a very important question for you. Oh yes. no! Uh oh! Here it comes. <laughs> of all the apps in the giant Play oh, Store, no. besides ones that Google makes, because that's not fair. What is one of your absolute favorite apps that you can't live without? Um, if you were to bring one app to the Android one, arena, yes. which no, is what perfect, we do here. Perfect. That's an even better yeah, way to put what, it. What, what, uh, what app would you bring yes. to the arena? What app would I bring to the what? The arena. Well, okay, this is inside baseball now. <laughs> Our app <laughs> review <laughs> segment is called the, the app arena. Yes, where but we battle anyways, each other I out. Yeah, you yeah. Know. I see. I get it. Um, what app would I bring? It kind of changes. I don't know. Yeah. It's a, kind of a hard question to answer. Uh, what's yours? <laughs> uh, right now? But I can answer right Google now. Maps because right I don't now. work for Google. <laughs> Mine will be the one that I'm bringing today, which I don't want to spoil. So another one would be Authy because I use it every single day and it keeps me secure. Boom. Huh. That's I literally good. can't get anywhere in the Bay Area without Google Maps. I'm I'm useless. Uh, that's true. I'm Google very Maps. useless okay. without it. I, just... I use, I use, um, no, what about you? I was, I was going to say, I was groaning because I was going to say, I got to say the app I probably use the most is WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I, I use that a that's lot. Good. I'm living on that app these days. A, a lot of people use WhatsApp. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, I like Instagram. Uh, I think that's fun. That's a fun app. You do. Uh, I follow you on Instagram. I like your Instagrams, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, uh, it's fun. You know, it, it, it kind of uh, lets me try to be creative. Uh, and then it doesn't require too much thought. Like, I don't have to type anything <laughs> sort of very thoughtful there. So it's yeah. kind of nice. <laughs> Uh, Twitter is kind of fun too, but sometimes it can be exhausting. Um, what else? I don't know. I like to catch up on the news. Um, I use, by the way, I mean, I know you said you, I can't use a, a Google app, but I will just uh, <laughs> throw this out there. It's okay. Go ahead. I use, Chrome. <laughs> I use Chrome a lot. Like I like to browse the web, you know, um, and, and it's kind of funny to think of it as an app because it's also a platform, but I yeah, think it's a, it's a great thing to have on phones. Absolutely. It cool. is totally a platform. Uh, thank you, Hiroshi. We know that you have to get going. We know that you are, are a very busy man and you've got a busy schedule and we are just thrilled that you even took uh, the time today to chat with us because uh, we've been hoping that, that we could get you on the show for a really long time. So hey, really appreciate so it. Thank you for everything you do. We really appreciate uh, uh, you know, all the sort of the attention you give to, uh, to Android. I mean, I think that's great. So really appreciate that.